clad in the silver robes that denote her station. An elf closes her eyes to shut out the distractions of the battlefield and begins her quiet chant. Fingers weaving in front of her, she completes her spell and launches a tiny bead of fire toward the enemy ranks, where it erupts into a conflagration that engulfs the soldiers. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of... You came up with a name for it, and I do not remember what it was called. Yes, I did, but I was hoping you remembered. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay then. <laughs> also, that's not what this is. This is different. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I mean, it's because we're doing... This. The other one's kind of us just hanging out, uh, talking oh, about yeah. nerd stuff. The other, This one's more informational, so it's a little different. The other one is us hanging out and talking about nerd stuff. This one is us talking about hanging out talking about nerd stuff but more in depth yeah <laughs> this, the other one is us um dang it that's gonna suck the other one is just us hanging out and this one is us hanging out with uh, a guideline of the order we should talk about the stuff i see i see mm-hmm. and what was our topic for today what 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 was the other thing called because i do need to know and having it on audio would be great for um. me uh, the, the name? Yeah, it was the name. I don't remember. I I, I wish I did, because I actually thought it was kind of awesome. Because right now it's the beta lounge, or the beta hang, yeah. and I, I don't like the name at all. I want to say it was something with dungeon in it. Maybe. I don't know. The beta dungeon. Was it? Is, the, is it the beta dungeon? No. No? That's where we're going to go with until The you... dungeon discussion. The dungeon discussion? I don't know. Discussion dungeon. Discussion dungeon. Oh, we'll, we'll workshop it. <laughs> It actually, like, while I was gone on vacation, that's what I was, th- I thought about that one day. I was like, oh, no, what was the name? Yeah. Oh, well. <sighs> it, oh, it's that's gonna, upsetting. Yeah, it's going to bother me so much. Anyways, today we're talking about wizards, the wizard class. Yay. It's uh, so this is a series we're going to start um, just talking about D&D things in general more in depth. Like, we'll be explaining some stuff uh, and just talking about ideas for it. So, like... We'll have one on each of the classes. I'm sure we'll do some monsters and stuff. Maybe we should probably do some like basic, just what is D&D at some point. Probably should have started there, but we're at Wizards right now. Was it Debate Dungeon? Maybe. Oh, are, you, are you going to be stuck on that, aren't you? I'm going to try not to be, but it is bothering me mm-hmm. like a lot. Another, um, another thing I want to do with the series is I want to do episodes on specifically the subclasses. Oh, yeah. Uh, so first we'll do the way it'll work is we'll do the basic class and if we don't have as too much to say about it we have like a lot of time left we'll do one subclass uh, and then if we have a lot of time like we just speed through it because we don't care about it I guess we'll do a second subclass and then like every episode we do of the subclasses we'll have a few I think each of us will pick one and then we'll do some we'll each do some research into it and then we can like talk about it and the other one will be blind and just spout ideas kind of Okay, so we're starting with base class. Starting starting with base class, uh, I read the little description I had for wizards. Yep. So let's start with, like, when you think of a wizard, what do you think of? A uh, scholar. I think of a scholarly wizard. If I'm going, like, off of what I would probably do, like, if someone said make a wizard, like, for a campaign, I would automatically go to Necromancer because I feel like that's kind of the iconic wizard. Yeah. Because any character that is a wizard... You don't remember the fact that they are a wizard, but if they're a necromancer, you remember they're a necromancer. Mm, interesting. Yeah, I think the necromancer is kind of like iconic in a way. Where I think necromancer is very iconic. Yeah. No. Uh, I think the like typical typical Dungeons and Dragons wizards like evocation or divination. Yeah. Those are very stereo. Like if you want to play wizard, most people will choose either one of those. To be but fair, like necromancer is very fair. iconic as just a concept, even. Yeah. Um, which is why I kind of wish it wasn't just limited to wizard. Like yeah. other classes have access to the spell, but they don't like get the same mm-hmm. like benefits. But like um, in media, what do you think of? There's like obviously Harry Potter and. Oh, stuff. in media. Um, I guess Harry Potter, yeah. Um, I I have a tough time really thinking about wizards because I am personally more of a martial kind of guy. Mm-hmm. And if I do play casters, I kind of prefer sorcerers or warlocks. Just because the scholar in D&D has never really been my vibe. That's fair. Uh, yeah. I, I think of like... Gandalf. I think Gandalf. of Gandalf. Yeah. I think of Gandalf. I... 
haven't the only thing I know I, this is gonna get me a lot of hate if people actually watch the videos which they don't <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, at least not now hopefully uh, I the only thing I know about Lord of the Rings all my information comes from Sarah Sarah you and the Lego game <laughs> yeah the Lego game I remember you telling me this the Lego game yeah I, I played the Lego game a lot was it good I never played it that's fine it's good it's as good as most other Lego games. Yeah, um, I haven't read all of Lord of the Rings. I got a decent chunk through it, and then I lost my place. And anybody who has tried reading books like from Lord of the Rings knows that rereading parts of it can get like really annoying because, as good as they are, um, in my opinion, they do take a long time to kind of get through certain bits, and so rereading them kind of feels tedious. Mm-hmm. Um. I will say, um, not talking about Lord of the Rings quality or anything, I don't know the Gandalf fits D&D wizard description. Yeah, I, I heard that. I heard he's kind of different. Because he, he gets his magic from his race, right? I do not know, especially. Or I don't remember. One or the other. Um, Gandalf is, like, weird in the fact that with a wizard in D&D, you know how the magic works. I watched kind of a video on magic systems. It might have been a lecture. I don't remember. My memory is bad. That's a recurring theme. Yeah. Um, unless it's with D&D stuff specifically, apparently. Um, Gandalf is kind of one of those people that you don't know how the magic works with. Um, I think it was like Brandon Sanderson, mm-hmm. who's like a pretty notorious fantasy author. Um, and it was like yeah it was just he kind of talked about how it was inherently like an unknowable magic system like you just didn't understand it but gandalf was kind of like an ability that you used or something Mm -hmm. and then like i'm obviously paraphrasing or i'm just not saying what he said at all i don't remember um but it was very interesting because gandalf doesn't feel like a wizard because it doesn't feel like he has specific spells And it feels like he can kind of just do what he wants. Mm -hmm. Like he just does what he needs to do. I feel like the closest example to D&D wizards are Harry Potter. I would probably But I don't think they fit perfectly. Because it is very, like, wizards go to schools. Their subclasses are called schools of magic. Yep. Um, But they don't... They they have a mana system, uh, unlike Harry Potter. I think they can just kind of freely cast spells, can't they? Uh, yeah, if I remember correctly, it's not necessarily, like, like I think it's kind of tied to, like, physical exhaustion, but I don't mm-hmm. think it's, like, hard tied into it. Yeah, much. and then, um, also, it's not like, oh, you learn this phrase and you can cast the spell. It's, like, uh, understanding, the, this kind of goes into the next section. There, in this, in D&D, there's this thing called the weave, which yes. is, ah... Uh, a magical, I don't know, like a magical aura in all of the multiverse, kind of? It, it's like, um, if any of you have read Tower of God on Webtoon, it's kind of like Shinsu, where it's like an all-encompassing kind of magical presence mm-hmm. that wizards um, and like arcan- arcan- arcane excuse me arcane casters kind of tend to like warp like yeah. they are kind of disrupting the weave like they're bending it yeah and then divine casters kind of like do the weave yeah the, so the the arcane casters like wizard they don't they like they learn spells but not in the harry potter sense they they learn to manipulate the weave in the way that they want yeah. I might have been wrong. It might be natural casters that I'm thinking of. Though I do know sorcerer is kind of weird because they derive power from the weird. It's a complicated thing. It's weird. It's kind of convoluted. Oh, well. Yep. That's, that's D&D for you. Yeah, that describes D&D perfectly. Yeah. Actually, actually though. Yeah. Um, uh, wait a minute. What? Did you just... Is... No. <laughs> no. It's not. <laughs> I, I promise it's not. Awesome. <laughs> awesome uh for audio listeners or sorry for all listeners i guess because i don't have video uh, i have this really powerful wizard npc uh in my my home world henry gizgak henry gizgak 
uh, he'll probably be referenced a lot uh, throughout just different videos. Especially this one. <laughs> I guess so. Um, and then on D and D Beyond, there is a picture of a guy that looks like pretty much exactly like Austin has described Henry Gizgak. He's not as extravagant as Henry Gizgak. Not as extravagant. Man but, is wearing. But like, like the 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 wizard in the player's handbook, like how you know how every class they give you in. Uh, yeah. Like uh, a reference image. A reference image. The wizard in the player's handbook looks a lot like uh, my NPC Henry Gizgak. It really does. Um. I wonder Which if I didn't you, even notice until now. Yeah, I wonder if you were like kind of like it was a kind of subversive kind of thing where you didn't like realize it, but you were kind of interesting. Um, yeah. Okay. What else about wizard do we want to? Uh, let's explain the magic a little. Magic system in D and D. Ah, uh, yes. Um, the magic system in D and D. There is an alternate rule you can use for like kind of a mana system, but mm. no one really uses that. No one I've seen uses that, and yeah. I've, I've thought about it, and I might do it in one of the. Um, I feel like, like maybe if when we play Strixhaven, I might do it. That's possible. To like experiment, see how it goes. I will say, I feel like it's a huge buff to casters. Like, really but they don't huge. necessarily need. Yeah. Um, which is like, my thing with casters is that a caster at high level can do anything they want to. A martial character at high level can fight. It also means they can technically know like ninth level spells at like level four. Which is, yeah, it's odd. I don't really like it. So we're not going to really talk about that one too much. Mm. The real one that pretty much everyone uses, I say real in quotation marks. Um, yeah, because that's, that's like an alternate rule. This is the yeah. normal rule. The kind of like um, default Yeah, is spell slots, where it's like you can cast this many first level slots, this many first level spells, this many second, this many third, all the way up to ninth. Mm. Um, and all the way down to cantrip. Yep. Except cantrips don't use... Spell slots. So uh, there's there's two types of spells. There's leveled spells and there's cantrips. Yep. Can cantrips are basically like a level zero spell. They're weaker than all other spells, but they do kind of like level with you. Yes. Um, mm. But they do not take a, any uh, spell slots. You can cast them as many times as you want, uh, as fr as frequently as you want. You cast once a turn. Mostly. One, once a turn, mostly. There's some that are like ten minutes depending on yep. what cantrip it yep. is. But, like, if you wanted to, you could just say, okay, well, there's this many turns in an hour and this many uh, hours before I long rest, or before we're going to long rest, I'm going to cast 9 million fire bolts because, just because I can. Because they don't take spell slots. Yep. But leveled spells do. Uh, as you level up, and you when you are playing a, a spellcaster, you start off with one, not one, you start off with first level spell slots. Yep. Uh, determine the amount is determined by the class. Most of the time, it is one though. It's two usually. Really? Yeah. Warlock, wizard, sorcerer. Is not druid first level? Like just first? first yeah, level. but you get two for for druid, dude, don't you? I don't remember. It's not important. Yeah. Um, um. So from and as you level up, you get more spell slots for like lower levels, and you gain spell slots for higher levels. So like at like second or third level the wizard gets second level spells and then after that they get third and fourth and fifth and so on yep. up until ninth which is the highest level mm -hmm. and each they can expend a spell slot to cast a spell and by expending that spell slot it's gone until you take a long rest and in rare cases short rest and yeah and in rare cases short rest it we'll, depends we'll, we'll, on the class yeah. depends on the class warlock can do it sometimes wizard can do a thing kind of like it mm. it's odd um which we'll go over yep we will go over that it's, um and that's the basics of it yeah there's also components for spells which most dms don't really keep track of yeah um components for spells are relevant if they consume it mm -hmm. like consume a thing or there if you are, don't have a spell cast there are things. verbal components which means you have to be able to speak uh so like one way one interesting way to make wizards not able to cast spells is there's a spell called silence which anyone in this area cannot make noise and therefore they cannot use verbal components yep um there's also somatic which is like hand movements the typical like flick of the wrist with the wand or like drawing a sigil in the air a great example is um what is it cone of fire fire something no fire hand hands hands of fire fire hands flame flame hands Oh, what is it called? There's, there's one spell um, in D&D &D which has an official 
uh, way official somatic component, which is fairly cool. I think you have all your fingers extended and you have your thumbs touch. Yep. And it makes a ray of fire. Cone. Cone of fire. Yep. It's and like then fire or something. the other spell, this is the one most people do not pay attention to at all, is material components. Yep. Some spells require like a sprig of mistletoe or gold dust or a glass orb or a, like random things to cast the spell. But if you have a material, like not a material, um, if you have a arcane focus, then you get to ignore those unless yes. it says consumes. Yes. Some spells will cons. Most of the time, this those are not consumed. If you have an arcane focus, that is. But uh, some of them consume them no matter what, and that's the main thing that most DMs will pay attention to. Like revivify the spell, consumes a diamond worth a hundred gold pieces, which means you have to have it. Which is actually to cast so the spell. Much money, but it like makes sense. Um. And so most teams won't pay attention to material components except for, like, those ones because they're consumed. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, Yay, spell systems. It's really weird, but it works. Yeah. Mostly. And, and also, most like, some things I've heard is, like, oh, you know, you can just be like, oh, this, you know, you're a wizard. You know where to get these things. You do it during uh, tonight or something. Uh, yeah. Just, like make a reason why you don't have to like pay attention to them yeah wizards i feel like kind of have a i don't know wizards feel weird to me yeah they wizards feel like they don't have as much meat on their bones like not in the sense that they're not like strong or anything it feels like sorcerer warlock druid all the other full casters just have more like interesting class abilities that aren't specific to subclasses whereas wizard i mean you're right i yeah. have, I have the uh, things listed out right down here and we're gonna go over that it i mean you're totally right yeah <laughs> i think we actually had a discussion about this not mm -hmm. on a podcast yeah unless it was if it was on podcast, that would be really funny <laughs> it would be funny um uh. yeah there's also there's schools of magic uh which or each each spell has a school of magic, uh, and those are. Oh God! Do you want me to go through the schools? Yeah, of magic? yeah, you could do that. So they're actually called arcane traditions. Um, no, no, no. The the schools of magic for the spells is. I think those are schools. Oh, okay. Schools of magic, not like. Mm -hmm. Not not the subclass. The spell typing. Each spell has a typing to fit it in a category. Uh, so you can like master one of the categories, I guess, is kind of the idea. Um, oh, God. just give me a second. Do, 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 do. It's not annoying. Why do I only have. Just wait, if you have none of them checked, all of them are checked. Just ignore us. We're struggling. School. Thank you. Okay. School of magic. So there's abjuration, which is. Ooh, oh, abjuration is like protective magic. It's, it's like, like shields and yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's like, like shielding yourself, shielding your allies, making sure people don't get hurt. Yep, and then there's conjuration. Next is conjuration. That is either creating things or making things disappear, typically. Like, yes, divination, which mm. is like prediction. And yeah, it's seeing the future is your typical oracle. A lot of times it's kind of like played as like giving advantage, like you know what's happening so it's kind of like a buff yeah it's like oh this guy's gonna swing at you right here so yep. dodge you have advantage and then there's enchantment there's enchantment which is should be illegal <laughs> it, making people do things that they wouldn't necessarily want to do because they're under your spell like charming like charming which it's always weird to me like enchantment is legal in a lot of D, &D settings. but necromancy isn't yeah and necromancy is actually just like not as bad yeah it's, it's not just not close <laughs> Oh, like at least with necromancy, it's not on like living people. Yeah, you, you don't bring their soul back unless you no. make like ghouls or something. Yeah. Which is different, I guess. Yeah, I guess. After that is evocation, which is your fireball. Typ your typical blaster wizard, you want to do a bunch of damage like fireball, lightning strike, uh, call lightning, bunch, like damaging spells, it buffs your damage. Or, I mean, that is the school, it has a bunch of damaging spells. Yep. Next is illusion, self explanatory. You make illusions. Uh, really? Yeah, yeah. Some of these illusions crazy. at higher levels are basically real. Might as well be real. Yeah. 
They do do uh, Because there's, like, there's Phantasmal Dragon, which has an Such actual... A cool fucking spell. <laughs> it's, like, seven level spell. It has an actual breath attack, but it's, it's an awesome. illusion. It's the, um, it's the coolest spell. It's yeah. so awesome. Necromancy is manipulating life, uh, so it can be yeah. healing, but it can also be... Kind of. Kind, no, every, almost every healing spell is necromancy. Is it really? Yeah. That's so odd. Because ne- necromancy is controlling life force. So it can it's healing. It's uh, There's like vampiric touch drains health, which counts as that. And then there's also like raising the dead. When the life cleric actually looks at their spell list. Yeah. <laughs> what have I become? Uh-huh. And then finally there's transmutation. Not finally, but Trans- finally for the typical list is transmutation. Full metal alchemist. <laughs> I guess so. It's turning things into things they shouldn't be. So like Brother. philosopher's stone Father. type like uh turning iron into gold turning the uh like polymorph like that guy is now a frog yes uh that kind of thing i think that's trans i really hope that's transmutation if it's not ignore us um yeah uh there are two other classes that most or schools that most people do not pay attention to or do not know of. it is in wild mount uh which is yes. t- is is a f- an official book but it's by matthew mercer it, yeah. it was officially published with D D. um but I don't think many people have it or don't read it. Um, I think it's because, like, at least on D&D Beyond, the two, like, extra kind of things aren't really, like, put forth as yeah. kind of part of the main thing. Mm-hmm. What, is, what is it? Graviturgy and Chronergy? It is, yes, Graviturgy and Chronergy. Graviturgy is controlling gravity. I do not know many of the spells, so I can't give examples. And then Chronergy is controlling time. I also cannot give examples of that. Time stop. I do. Time Stop is not a Chronergy spell, though. Why not? They have the... Because it was Time Stop was released before Chronergy was a thing. Time Stop is the worst ninth level spell. Well, I think we've said that like a thousand times, but it really is. It, kind of it sucks. sucks. It's um, the worst. You can't even attack while it's happening. It's... Yeah. <sighs> and so that's kind of... That's the magic system. Yes. I'm going to do a brief history of the wizard class. Okay, let's go. So in first edition... Add it. There were actually three classes... One of them was the magic user. Oh, uh, interesting. Which later, in a later book, got a, su- got a subclass called the illusionist. And the illusionist had spells that the magic learner couldn't, magic user couldn't learn. They were kind of different. I, I, I don't really know how. I don't know much about other editions other than 5e, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and fun fact, the magic user... Actually, wait. I, these notes are making it seem like there were more than three classes, but... Anyways, the magic user was the only class that could cast spells of 8th and ninth level. Everything else was capped out at 7th level. That's... But 7th mm. level is actually, like, still really high. Mm. Um, and then in AD&D 2nd edition... AD&D is Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Yep. Uh, this made a group... This changed magic user to mage. Okay. And it uh, was, like, a generic group called uh, of wizard group the wizard groups were like specializations so yep. like yeah, modern day subclass evocation uh like school of evocation school of um chronergy yes. uh the specializations but the mage was like a generalist so i think you got the choice between those mm-hmm. uh there were there was the philosophy specialists which yep. was abjurer uh which is abjuration conjurer which is conjuration Diviner, divination, enchanter, uh, enchantment, illusionist, which is illusions. Really? Mm-hmm. Invoker, which I believe is the same as evo- evocation, which is like the damaging stuff. Necromancer, necromancy. And then there's also the transmuter, which is transmutation. After that, there were the effect specialists, which was the elementalist, which is like they focus on one of the four elements, like fire, uh, water, earth, and air. And then there is the dimensionalist, which is like that's cool. plane shift stuff. They focus on different dimensions. I like that. The force mage, which focuses on like the force damage type. Yes. And then the mentalist, which is like protecting against charms, protecting your mind. Interesting. Mm-hmm. And shadow mage, which is being like you're stronger in the dark and you do stuff with shadows. Edge. 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 And finally, there were the th- th- thaumaturgic specialists, which had the alchemist, which made po- potions, the artificer, which made temporary magic items, the geometer, uh, or yeah, ge- it should be geomancer. It's geometer, which is made 
spell scrolls. What? Mm -hmm. The song mage, which made verbal spells, and the wild mage, which did wild magic stuff. Oh, okay. So you can actually see uh -huh. a lot of things that became like modern. Yeah. This this was a little different uh, from first edition as this class could cast any of the wizardly spells, unlike the illusionist versus magic user, where like illusionists are the only ones who can cast these and magic user are the only ones who can cast these, but they're kind of the same-ish. Okay. Um, in also the specialization that I just talked about, those different like subclasses, if they did that, that meant that, that they couldn't learn from uh, opposite schools of magic. Okay. Yeah. Which I think is interesting. Like, oh, if you're an evocation wizard, you can't learn enchantment. That is interesting. Yeah. I kind of like that. In third edition, there was finally the wizard class, is what it was called. Yay. And in fourth edition, it was kind of like a controller. It was in the controller. I forgot about this. Fourth edition, there were four categories of classes. Uh, very video gamey. You basically wanted one of each in a party. So if there was one, if there was a controller already, you wouldn't want another controller. Uh, but wizard was a controller. This is why no one likes fourth edition. So it focused on multi-target damage spells, debuffing, and altering the terrain. That could have actually been super cool. Why did it have to be in 4th edition? <laughs> and then the schools were different in this edition. Uh, like mastering the schools, like so doing being an evocation wizard uh, was different. I don't really know how, but it wasn't as, you know, as big. Most of the schools were focused in descriptions versus like actually mattering that much, I think. This is why no one likes 4th edition. Yeah. And then 5th edition happened. 5th edition happened. Let's go Yay. down the wizard class. Let's let's talk about the wizard class. So let's start with, with the, the first thing they get. Um, Spellcasting. And arcane... They get arcane recovery at level 1? Start here. Hit die. Oh, okay. Hit die is a d6, which is the lowest it can be. <laughs> <laughs> Dies of 1d4 sneezing damage. Yep. Very, very squishy. Yep. Squishy people. I think one... I, I want to say this before we go into this. One big thing between older, like, 1st edition and 5th edition wizards is that... Not, not necessarily 1st, but, like, older editions. The newer editions have made it more on par of, like, the leveling system of, like, fighter. Whereas, in older editions, martial classes were the strongest at lower levels. But, yeah. that was made up for by the, like, wizard, who was super weak, was basically just a guy with health at 1st levels. Like... You would run out of spells, and then you would need daggers so that you would survive. Do I hate that? I don't think I hate that, and then, if I'm being honest. As you got further, so like as you got up to level 20, you were omnipotent, and the martial classes, the martial people you've been adventuring with this whole time basically become your bodyguards because you're stronger than them now. You see, that's what I kind of hate about modern D&D, I suppose. Like, in a way. I don't completely hate it, but you know what I mean. Is that... Martial classes don't get enough love, bro. Like, you've upped the power of the wizard so that they, like, are on pace with you, but then they still outpace you at later levels. Yeah, they. I think spellcasting classes do outpace martial classes at later levels. It's, like, but half the It sounds switch. like it's much less so than earlier editions, which is nice. That is nice. But, like, also, martial classes will never get wish, which is literally <laughs> just, like... If you fight a 20th level wizard and literally any other 20th level character, the wizard will always win unless, like, the other person goes first. That's true, yeah. Not to mention, that might not even matter because they have access to shield and counter spell and... Tough. Yeah. Just like, you know, just as long as they survive the first round is their goal and then they can just be gone and then kill you. That's not even just wizards. That's just all spellcasting that yeah. can go to ninth level because wish is broken. I mean, except cleric. I don't think cleric gets it. Uh, maybe depending on subclass. I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, it's <sighs> it bothers me. So yeah, wizards. Um, actually, I think in. Oh, I don't want to say this and be wrong. Uh, in, in this edition, in fifth edition, they use a d6 for hit points, so they are very squishy, which is they are squishy. Yeah, the whole idea is they've spent their entire life studying instead of getting yoked, uh, and Fuck. that's why they are able to be a wizard. Unless you're a blade singing wizard. Unless you're a blade singing wizard. In which case, you're a badass. Um, yeah. And I like you far more than any other wizard. <laughs> Except maybe necromancy. And then let's talk about the proficiencies a little bit. Okay, you get how many armor proficiencies? 
Zero. Zero. Again, you were too busy reading books. And your weapon proficiencies might as well be non-existent. Daggers, darts, slings, quarterstaff, lice, crossbows. If it's a bad weapon in the game, you probably have a proficiency. In yeah. It. I think, Not like crossbows. I think the I mean. idea is... Well, they don't need them most of the time. I mean, yeah, firebolt. And I think the reason they have uh, these in the first place is because, uh, like, kind of like the first edition thing of, like, you need them when you run out of spell slots. Like, just in case, I suppose. Yeah. Like, they don't want them to feel useless if they get forced into close quarters. Yeah. Those stale close quarter spells you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Tools are none. Yep. Saving throws, intelligence, and wisdom. That makes which, sense. if we're being honest, I think wisdom and dex are the two most powerful saving throws. Yeah. Because having, and so having wisdom here is very good. Yeah. It also just makes sense for you to be intelligence and wisdom because yep. you're super scholarly. You've read uh, lots of books on the, information to give you intelligence and then maybe some, like, I don't know, I wisdom do, books. I like the idea of wisdom books. Wisdom books. I do like the idea of a wizard who is bad at wisdom yeah. because they're kind of closed off from getting any experience. That could that be would, fun. Yeah. I, I don't know. I just think it would be a vibe. Yeah. Wizards have some potential, I suppose. And then skills, you get to choose from two of these. Arcana, history, insight, investigation, medicine, and religion. A lot of the brainiac stuff. A lot of the stuff you would go to college to learn. I disagree on the religion one. Reli religion is religious knowledge. Okay, I don't disagree on the religion one. <laughs> Austin has changed my mind with like what four words. What so what 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 did you think it was? What why did you disagree? Well, religion um, as a skill always kind of feels like it is. Like just the way, D and D is religion feels more like a um, I understand um, like this religion because I am extremely like, religious. That makes sense. And like with paladins and clerics. So did it, you think it should be a wisdom thing? I honestly think it might be the wisdom because like even if you have knowledge of different religious kind of orders mm. i feel like you could also have gained that from like experience with those religious orders yeah that's fair and so it might be one of those skills that like you can change depending on the situation like strength for intimidation yeah uh yeah typically what it is what tip when i've seen religious check religion checks it's typically like oh you might recognize this symbol Mm -hmm. So, which is, would be, like, intelligence. Yeah. But I, I totally see what you're talking about. Yeah. Sweet. You have changed my mind. With, like, <laughs> what, it was literally four words. Religion is religious knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, oh, I guess you're right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's what most of the intelligence abilities are, yeah. is knowledge of that. Except investigation. Like, nature is knowledge of nature. Wait, is nature intelligence? Yeah. What the fuck? I think so. Because survival is what you would normally think of as nature, but nature is like, I know that plant is poisonous. I feel like they might need to, like, redo skill names, personally. They probably are. They're making a new addition. We're, no one's going to play that shit. Eh, yeah. No one no one who likes 5e. Like, I will try it once, but I think I will stick with 5e as hard as possible. Yeah. Um, And then I will try other systems. Like, I'm just opposed to 5.5. .5. Like... Or 1D&D. &D. That it is... is five, I'm going to call it 5.5. .5. Everyone calls it that because that's what it is. Yeah. I don't like it. Yeah. But we've said that a thousand times, so... <sighs> just start making... But, like, there are some... I'm, I'm going to say this for the, like, last time. Probably not. Uh, they they are making some good decisions for, like, lucky exhaustion. I love the new systems for those, those two. Those are small changes. But those are the small changes. The overall big changes, like the class changes, are really <sighs> bad. And they shouldn't, like, they except are... Except with Ranger. Except for... No, I don't know. I, haven't, <laughs> I didn't read that one that much. Like, most of the stuff they're doing, they're, they are making it worse, the class worse, which I disagree with for most of the situations. Like, Paladin should be worse than it is, but not that much, you know? Yeah, it feels like they saw how, how good it was, and then they just, like, uber... But developers have a tendency to do that, I suppose. Yeah. I... Yeah. He was onto equipment. Yeah, <laughs> enough ranting about the actual mm -hmm. company. Uh, you start with the following equipment in addition to the equipment granted by your background. A quarterstaff or a dagger. 
Makes sense. Something a, simple. A component pouch or an arcane focus. They're the same thing. Pretty much. A component pouch has all of the basic components you need, but an arcane focus me, me, makes it so you don't need the components. I always choose arcane focus because yep. I feel like that's just the better deal. <laughs> yep. But I think they do work essentially the same. They do. Com- and like especially depending on your DM, it doesn't matter. Yeah, component pouch is usually just kind of defined as like it has all the components you need. Like, yeah. Unless it's, like, a 100 GP diamond or something like that. Yeah, which is a cleric thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, is this a scholar's pack or, or an explorer's pack? Most people don't even pay attention to this, though. Most, yeah, most people don't pay attention to the packs, though. I do think they can be useful. They can be useful. Uh, in, especially more survival-oriented campaigns. Yeah, yeah. Uh, scholar's pack, I guess I would flavor that around your backstory. Were you someone who was cooped up learning uh, all their life? That would be scholar. Or yeah. were you, like, a field expert? Yeah. Which would be, like, explorers. Um, and then, of course, a spell book. Which is the most important thing for a wizard. Because the, if the, you mm-hmm. lose your spell book, you cannot cast. The difference between wizards and every other class is that wizards keep their spells in a spell book. And they need their arcane focus to cast said spells. But they also need their spells to... They need their spell book to know their spells. But it's also their biggest advantage. Mm, yeah, because then they can they can learn additional ones and then change them out later on. They can, which is why wizard is, like, considered to be so powerful. But it really people. is up to your DM to include yes. the spells that you can learn. So it, it's like very iffy. Uh, it's depending on if your DM realizes and like makes sure to include that stuff that yeah you need. And then spell casting. It's spell casting we kind of explained earlier it just yeah. like it lets you do the spell casting stuff yeah. it's like warlocks are slightly different but most classes that cast spells just get like basic spell casting yeah um then cantrips we explained yep they're free spells basically mm-hmm. and then spell book you have a spell book containing six first level wizard spells of your choice which kind of is showing already what the wizard is kind of better at than a lot of other classes they know a lot of spells they have versatility very versatile there's very versatile class though you could make an argument for like cleric or druid because they can swap out spells but um wizard can as well it's just they also the thing about wizards is they have a larger spell list they do uh, so it's they have huge. more choices to choose from assuming that you know the dm allows uh, like the DM gives spell scrolls because the way it works is you take a spell scroll and a wizard can copy that into their spell book by expending a certain amount of time and a certain amount of gold. And then once it's in the spell book, they just, they know it and then they can change yep. it out every now and then. Um, and then you get to like arcane recovery after scrolling through like a bunch yep. of like specific spell spell casting. When you finish a short rest, you can choose... Uh, expended spell slots to recover. The spell slots can have a combined level that is equal to or less than a half your wizard level rounded up. That's pretty That's pretty good. That's, that's actually pretty good. That's yeah. pretty solid. Yeah, so that means at second level you can... Oh, I guess no. At third level you could have get a second uh, spell slot back or a second level spell slot back or just two first level, which would be pretty... Yeah. That's better than I thought it would. I, 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 I guess short rests don't happen too often or that i think arcane yeah. recovery is kind of looked over a little bit that's true i'm i mean it you use it once a day so yeah. it's i don't know and then arcane tradition do you get that at second level mm-hmm. that's kind of a unique thing mm-hmm. i wish more classes did that yeah so arcane tradition is the subclass is the, like the subclass name for the wizard every class has a different one uh, barbarians have paths clerics have domains paladins have oaths for ranger it's called your arcane tradition or not ranger for wizard it's called your arcane tradition for warlocks it's really weird mm. because they have like essentially two subclasses yeah w- warlocks very unique it's a very odd class it is Hello. Mm. um so yeah mm. and then you get nothing at third level yeah <laughs> let's let's so i have it listed out real, right here let's talk about the arcane traditions real quick let's uh if you'll go over to the list of them and we can just talk about them briefly so okay. in the first in the player's handbook there's one for each uh school of magic except yep. except for chronergy and graviturgy because that came later on um 
Yes. Uh, and there are there are subclasses for those now uh, in in uh, Explorer's Guide to Wild Mount because that's when the cl- school came mm-hmm. about. Thank you, Matt Mercer. And basically what each of them does is make you better at that type of spell. So there's one for Abjuration, Conjuration, Divination, all the the big list we had earlier. And it makes that school of magic better for you. Um, So like Divination, you're better with Divining. Enchantment, you're better with Enchanting. Evocation, you're better with doing... You do more damage. Yep. Um, Necromancy, you're dead, get buffs. You're undead, get buffs and stuff like that. Yeah. And then you get to kind of some more specific ones. Um, the ones that are not part of like the bigger schools are blade singing, order of scribes, and um, war, war magic. Blade singing is like um, is imagine it's kind of like a m- magic sword person almost. It's like kind of like a mix between mar. It is a mix between martial and. Uh, but it's not a half magic, caster. But it's, it's not like, a half caster. They're still full casters. It's still focused on spells, and so it doesn't. I I kind of think blade singing doesn't focus enough on swords, because um, it just feels odd. Um, blade singing is what you do if you didn't feel like playing a warlock to also get the full cast and <laughs> the blade, because I feel like warlock does it better. But blade yeah. singing is more interesting. I think blade singing can be fun. It, I agree. Is if you want to do a lot of magic, but you also want to have a really cool magic sword. I love magic swords. <laughs> um, and then the so Order much. of the Scribes is like your typical book man. I think it's one of my favorites, actually. Uh, they they they're like the the, uh, from what I understand, they sound like the, ooh, where is it? The geometer from third, second edition, the 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 scroll man. It also has some like some of my favorite wizard abilities. Mm-hmm. It's just really interesting. The Order of the Scribes is the biggest like scholar like i want to know as much as i can and help yep. others know as much as they can that's the like generic um order of scribes wizard and then finally if we have war magic i don't know like anything about war magic so you got this right uh yeah okay so you know how you want to be a wizard right but you also want to do combat shit that's war magic <laughs> Um, War Magic, if I remember correctly, is also, let me, let me check really quick. Um, I feel, I almost feel like it's Bladesinger-esque, except without the melee. Because Bladesinger is definitely, like, combat-focused. Yeah, okay, so War Magic is a lot of, like, increase your AC, um, Mm. and a lot of, like, kind of avoiding being hit. Okay. Um, and then it's like... That kind of makes sense. Yeah, and then do, like, some extra damage with Power Surge, a significant amount, it seems. Yeah. Um, let, me, let me just read through this bit really quick. <laughs> no. Okay, it doesn't seem that good at low levels. But it's pretty good at higher levels. Yeah. It lets you deal extra damage equal to your wizard level, like half Ooh. your wizard level, which okay. is like 10 extra damage. It does not seem like a lot until you do it. Yeah, especially when you have uh, spells that have multiple target, like magic missile. That is an extra 30 damage, right? And if you guys, it's, you don't think it's good. Until, like, you look at... I hadn't even thought about Magic Missile. I was just thinking, like, even with just cantrips, getting an extra, like, 10 damage. That's like, true, because there's, just... like, um... Uh, or, like, or, like, like, Firebolt. Firebolt has extra raise when you, as you level up. Yeah. Mm, Firebolt, Firebolt just deals extra damage. Oh, Firebolt's just extra damage. Then Eldritch Blast, but that's, like, a warlock thing, I not f- a wizard thing. I think it's separate. It's, it's weird. Um, so, also, the thing with, um... Um... It also, like, charges um, whenever you, like, successfully do Dispel or Counter Spell. Which That's is... pretty cool. That's actually really unique. I like that. Yeah. It's it's a very interesting ability. Um, you can give yourself a bonus to your initiative rolls equal to your intelligence at level 2. Okay. Which is so good. <laughs> it's not even funny. Like, this is actually a crazy subclass. Mm. Like, it doesn't focus a lot on... A lot of the wizard abilities that are like kind of typical 
Mm. But I think I'm quite fond of this because it takes like the initial squishy class and definitely kind of takes it in a more tanky direction. Yeah. Though it's not a tank. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. It increases like it puts you in the thick of it more. When you're hit by mm. an attack or you fail a saving throw, you can use your reaction to gain a plus two bonus to your AC against that attack or a plus four bonus to that saving throw. Interesting. You can't cast spells other than cantrips until the end. Okay, that's like... But anyways, really that's war magic. Yes. Um, uh, moving on. Here, Here's the section where I have a little PSA. Wizard is a very versatile class. Yes. They, they have a lot of spells. They know a lot of spells. They have a lot of, like weirdly specific spells like knock uh automatically opens locks and it does make a noise it makes a noise uh like you're knocking uh really <gasps> uh, the or thing. dispel magic or they have damaging spells like fireball and then they have things like detect good uh, actually they may not they, it's definitely a utility caster uh they're they're a utility caster but they can also do damage they do you can like pick a path you want to go in and then you can do it fairly well with the wizard I don't know that I completely agree. I think wizard lacks combat until like super late, because until you get like your crazy spells, you're kind of just like meh. I I guess, but I also think that like w with subclasses, yeah, because like if you want to protect people, wizards can't really protect people. They don't have healing spells. But if you do an abjuration wizard, you can protect people. That's fair. Let me rephrase what I said earlier. I think wizards can be good in combat. However, I think the things that wizards do are not meant for combat. Yeah. And so it feels very samey when you are in combat and you don't get to use a lot of your, like, wizard abilities. I think that they are, first and foremost, utility casters. They are yep. good at buffing people and they are good at doing out-of-combat things like dispel magic, identify. Yep. But um, they do, they can lack in combat, uh, especially depending on the combat. The combat could be very, like, static uh, a lot of combat is very static. Or if it's kind of close range, or, yeah. that kind of vibe, you know? And here is another complaint about the wizard class. Knowing Now knowing that, the next time... So we, we, we talked about this. They get spellcasting, arcane recovery, cantrips, and first level spells at first level. Mm -hmm. The next time they get... And then they get their arcane tradition at second level. The next time they get something as a wizard class as a whole that is not related to their subclass or ability score improvements is guess don't look at this list i think i already did level six level six yeah that's my guess no what is it higher Thir 14 higher what 17 it is the next time they get something as a wizard class as a whole no is 18th level no shut which is spell mastery. That is, that's actually... And so that that is one of our big complaints about the wizard, is it it tries to be very unique in each school of magic with each of its subclasses, but I feel like it almost lacks a little uniformity that it, it could have. Yeah, it doesn't have that unifying kind of vibe yeah. that a lot of classes Like do. all barbarians rage, right? Yes. Like all bar almost every barbarian is very similar to almost every barbarian because they all rage. And you can spin that a little bit. Like I heard one was like, they're like a big dog. They get really playful and that's them raging. They don't realize they're going to hurt people, which I think is pretty unique. Yeah. But it's still very similar to, oh, you hurt this plant. I'm going to murder you. That's a rage. Yes. Compared to wizard who has spells. The thing about like being unique in each subclass is not a bad thing. No, no, definitely it's, not. It could be good. The thing is, wizards give you an expansive spell list and the ability to copy spells. And so you're like, okay, I'm a utility caster, I'm versatile. Then you do not get abilities that focus on anything like that unless you pick a specific subclass. And I think Order of the Scribes is pretty much your only option for that. Yeah, Order of the Scribes is really big for utility. It, and then like, if you want to do specifically, you want to be a trickster, you could do illusionists. Um, but it's like kind of the vibe you want to you go for. Um, it takes a framework yeah. that should be a versatile spellcaster, but then doesn't really give it the tools to yeah. be the versatile spellcaster you were promised. Yeah. Um, don't get me wrong. It is still versatile because of that expansive spell list. But order of the... 
Order of the Scribes wasn't like an initial subclass. It wasn't. It was in Tasha's, I think. Yeah, which is... Which is a fairly new book. came out in like 2020, 2019. Which is still a while ago, but yeah. yeah. Um, which is kind of my problem, is that it kind of fixed it, but that's the problem. They had to fix it. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong, people still love Wizard, and I it's don't... It's still, yeah, it's still like a great class. I still think that people who play Wizard enjoy it a lot. And but... I think that focus on different types of spells is super interesting, and it lets you kind of pick a path. However, I think the lack of kind of an overarching set of abilities mm -hmm. doesn't let itself dis establish because the Wizard. For a long time, you had to pick a path path and not everyone wants to it's like the the freaking the second edition thing uh, again yes you had to choose a specialization not but you didn't do that in uh second edition in second edition you could be a mage a generalist order of the scribes yes uh or you can be have a specification which i read out earlier which is what it was originally you had to choose a specialization yes i'm not saying that it should have been perfect but I feel like there should be a set of abilities, like with Barbarian where it's Rage, or Paladin where it's Smiting, or like with Sorcerer how it's Sorcery Points, or how with Warlock it's like um, Otherworldly Patron. No. no, Warlock has... Warlock's unique. Warlock is unique in a lot of fronts. Warlock is just, it's hard to describe how a Warlock is, but with a Warlock you're kind of unified with your like... Patron. otherworldliness yes it's odd i don't know how to describe warlock warlock is versatile in everything like kind of like wizard is yeah. and you have to specialize but i don't think it like kind of falls as hard as wizard does. yeah i don't I, I don't know warlock's hard to describe it really is um but like with a lot of classes there's that kind of unifying ability that gives the class itself an identity mm -hmm. without having to rely on subclasses yeah wizard kind of lacks that and it goes the opposite direction. Yes, it tries to establish itself as a spellcaster. And it does that. I dislike the idea that the wizard isn't, like, wizard. It is mm. a kind of wizard. Yeah. And, you know, I kind of see why they did it. I, I Now that I have this listed out in front of me, I see why they did it that way. It just still feels lacking. So at first level, you get spellcasting, arcane recovery, cantrips, and first level spells. Yes. Second level, you get your subclass. Third level, you get second level spells. At fourth level, you get an ability score improvement or a feat, your choice. Which, let's be honest, if you have this many ability score improvements and you don't increase your intelligence to max, you're yeah, kind yeah. of missing out. Uh, you have your ability score improvement. At fifth level, you get third level spells. Then yep. after that, you get a subclass feature at sixth level. And then at seventh level, you get fourth level spells. Yes. At 8th level, you get another ability score improvement or feat. Uh, and then at ninth level, you get 5th level spells. At 10th level, you get another subclass feature. At 11th level, you get 6th level spells. At 12th level, you get another ability score improvement. And then level 13 gives you 7th level spells. Uh, 14 gives you a subclass feature. 15 gives you 8th level spells. 16 is an ability score improvement. 17 is ninth level spells. You know what? Wizard... Eighteen is spell mastery. Nineteen is ability score improvement, and twenty is signature spells, which we'll talk about in just a moment. So I see what they were going for. You get something at every level. You get access to a higher level spell. Yes. You get access. You get ability score improvement, or you get subclass features. And I, yeah. I like, I like how the spell class features, subclass features are spread out, kind of. Yeah. They're not too close together, and you get a decent amount of them. But I don't know. I feel like. You so often you only get access to higher level spells, which you get to choose like two of at most. Yeah, and it just like it feels a little lacking. I would also say that wizard, when you pick a subclass, is all it's limiting, but like you get a bunch of different things for that from that spell class, like that subclass, not spell class. You know yeah. what I meant. Yeah. Um, but it's. A lot of the abilities from Wizard, like, let's take Necromancer, which I think we're supposed to discuss later. <laughs> Not this episode. Not this episode. Too long? Yeah, I think that I think that each <laughs> time we do a, a general class deep dive, we're not going to have time for subclasses. And then afterwards, we can do subclasses. That's fair. Um, okay, so I will talk about Necromancer just a bit. Necromancer has, like, one ability that is very good. That ability is amazing. Because it lets you, like, buff your undead. 
I think there's like one other ability that gives you like prof- your in depth proficiency with weapons. I have no clue. Um, I don't remember the exacts, but then there's also an ability that is just like it turns undead, like you can attempt to charm it. Yep. Which is weird because it's hyper specific and very situational, and it's it just kind of feels weird and bad because when you use it, it has potential to be very cool, but that's if you get a chance to use it. And you're kind of relying a lot on um, your DM. Your DM, which I think the necromancer in general relies a lot on the DM. You need downtime to be a necromancer. You almost yes. need. I don't. You don't have to. Necromancers can still be fun without downtime, but you almost need downtime to play a good necromancer. I think necromancers should be like have a discussion with their DM, like if they're starting at a higher level, and just be like, "Yo." can my zombies already be present? Yeah. Because they're going to try and find a way to get them already as hard as they can. So you might as well just be like, okay, yeah, they're going to be here anyway. For ease of everyone, uh-huh. we'll just say like, yes, your spell slots are gone. Your zombies are here with you. Also, necromancers are weird because it adds, it's the whole thing of like conjuring things of like, oh, it's adding more to the initiative and it makes combat longer and kind of sloggier. And it's like, hey, necromancer, necromancy is cool. But also, it's like, it makes combat a little annoying. It also fucks up the action economy so hard. Yeah, I don't know. I think necromancy is cool, but I think it can be pretty annoying. Yeah, I would agree. I think it's one of the more interesting things, just because I think, like, I don't know, it's just inherently, like, a very, like, narratively important thing that you're raising dead. Yep. Yeah. Anyways, that's, um... Oh, yeah, and then signature spells. Let's talk about signature spells. Okay, let's talk about it. Have we talked about um, the 18th level ability, though? Yeah, we did. We talked about spell magic, didn't we? I think you said it happened, and then we just didn't discuss it because oh. we were, like, angry. <laughs> let's, go to sig- let's go to spell mastery real quick. Okay, at 18th level, you have achieved such mastery over certain spells that you can cast them at will. Choose a first-level wizard spell and a second-level wizard spell that are in your spell book. You can cast those spells at their lowest level without expending a spell slot when you have them prepared. If you want to cast either at a spell higher level, you must expend a slot as normal. This is, did you say third level? Um, what level is it? Second and first. Second and first level spells. This D- is crazy. This is crazy. It's an 18th level ability, so it feels kind of lackluster. But when you consider the fact that you are casting a second level spell yeah. as a cantrip, not to mention, you can swap these out, out by spending, like, eight hours in a study. It says this. I am... Okay, yeah. No, that's kind of... That's kind of... Uh, I'm thinking about it more. Like, you can Misty yes. Step every turn without spending spell slots, which is kind of crazy. Is Misty Step first or second level? Second. That's actually insane. That is beyond crazy. Like... Which is just, like, teleport 30 feet in any direction. That's what that spell does. I cannot... Like... <laughs> put into words how broken i think this is it's not like to the point where it's gonna break your game but i think it puts so much value like it doesn't seem like it's as good as it is like i'm kind of having a hard time believing like myself with this but when you actually think about it think about how good a changeling's ability to shapeshift is and why a changeling is regarded as so high up in like the pecking order it's because they can cast alter self at will and it's, it's now wizards alters. can yes Wizards can do that at 18th level no matter which subclass they took. Yep. This is, like, kind of what I love to see. Like, it is a spell... Like, this is what the wizard is doing kind of cool. Where yeah. it's like, you are a master of spells. And I almost... I don't know. I This might this would be pretty broken, but I, I think it would be cool to see wizards get more of this. Like More generic spell buffs as opposed to specific spell buffs. So yeah. it, like, embraces the idea of, um, like, spells... You're knowledgeable. Yes, it's embracing the idea that you've studied, like, all of magic. And so you are good with all of magic as opposed to one specific thing. Yeah. Though I do see the reasoning behind, like, a wizard being mostly good, like, mm-hmm. exceptionally good at one thing, because they are a scholar that studied it. Um now, Yes. Signature spells. 20th level ability. That's going to be crazy, guys. I hope it's crazy. It's not. Is it really not? This I'm is pretty sure I remember what it does. It's so annoying when they do this, and they're like, 20th level ability, it's not that great, because it's your capstone, man. I would rather have the 18th level ability, I think. If I'm remembering really? this correctly, 
If I'm remembering this correctly, I would rather have the 18th level ability. Okay. Read it out. When you reach 20th level, you gain mastery over two powerful spells and can cast them with little effort. Choose two third level wizard spells in your spell by cast your signature spells. You always have these spells prepared. They don't count against the number of spells you have prepared and you can cast each of them once at third level without expending a spell slot. When you do so, you can't do so again until you finish a short or long rest. If you want to cast either spell at a higher level, you must expend a spell slot at a lower level. That is... I don't think that's as good as the 18th level no, ability. the 18th level ability is just better. I wish that... It's because you can cast them more than once. I wish Signature Spell was Spell Mastery, but for third level spells. That's so broken. You're level 20. You can kill God. <laughs> that's <laughs> true. I mean, like, you, you can cast... Yeah, dude, at 17th level, you have access to the Wish spell. I don't care. <laughs> that's true. Like, and if you think about it this way, you're at 20th level... You can cast Wish. Are you going to spend your time casting Fireball as a cantrip? Or are yeah, you going no, no. to cast Wish? Are you going to cast Fireball as a cantrip once? Or are you going to cast Wish? Yeah, I feel like they actually could have done that. Like, it sounds broken, but it's like, okay, you already can do it with second level spells. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, that's really I think that, I there. think that, like, it's cool, I guess. I can cast a Lightning Bolt and a Fireball for free. Yes. But it could be better it could yep. be so much better 20th level should be a level that you get something absolutely absurd mm -hmm. i i fully agree which is something i hate about 1 dnd and i know we said it a thousand times but the fact that they're like you get a feat at level you get a, 20 you get a boon you get an, a boon and the boons aren't even they're not good they're like barely they the getting. boons aren't as good as the boons in fifth edition i don't understand why they would do that it makes every class feel the same at 20th level which i think is dumb yep. i think that each class should feel unique and i know they're making it feel the same because they're making a video game they're making their ttrpg literally a video game and it oh i, I could rant about this for hours do you need a hug buddy <sighs> no it's fine I'm, I'm, <laughs> they they're making a ttrpg so they want to make it easy to program so they're making classes more basic which i hate i think that each of them should be unique i really like paladin 20th level abilities <sighs> yeah they're, they're cool Th that I is think, an yeah. example of making them unique to the subclass and it being like good. good yeah like vengeance paladin gets like you become an angel for like a minute and you get a which bunch is still of like buffs. just on brand for the paladin it's just like it's it hits good. the mark perfectly like oh it's so good and then like all of them have this like really cool ability like even if it's not the most broken thing of the game it is still something you want to do mm -hmm. because it feels cool the 20th level wizard ability, and I think the monk one too, do not feel that good. Ranger. Oh god. We don't talk about the we'll, ranger. We'll get ability. to the ranger in one of these videos. Oh my god, the 20th level ability is so bad. <laughs> it's so <sighs> bad. This is why people hate the ranger, not because of its flavor. Oh no. Austin has people told me so much. Just then. <laughs> um, Austin has taught me that the ranger is cool flavorfully. Um <laughs> It took a long time. <laughs> um, but I still think mechanically it is yeah. the most lackluster class because they just did it bad. I guess I can agree. Thank you. As much as I don't want to. Yeah. It's one of those things that I kind of have to acknowledge. Like, the ranger has potential. Mm -hmm. But they executed it poorly. Because I think they were scared. Especially with Beastmaster. Because giving something a permanent companion... Mm -hmm can be very good especially if it can attack and so they overcompensated yeah they were terrified which again is understandable they just they, it could have been better yeah having said all of this the wizard class is not a bad class it's still fun i have a player who plays it literally every character yes and enjoys it a lot it's just very different it's, in the fact that it's mm, not as a unified it's as not class. as unified as normal classes and i think that if you want to try wizard you should I think it would be really fun. I've played a wizard before. It was pretty wacky, and it was interesting. I tried to stay, like, on one flavor. Yeah. I tried to do only fire damage, which, like, limited me a lot. But yeah. I, it was cool. I, I enjoyed it. Uh, there's, I do have a lot of gripes about wizard uh, that I we have expressed, but I have gripes about every class, so. Yeah. Those are your ideas as a whole, kind of your... Yeah. That's my, that's my like, ending state, my closing statement about playing the wizard. Le It'll be fun. If you want to try it, it is a little complicated. There's a lot of spells you may might want to hold off until you have an, a grasp of D and D. But I would agree with that. Yeah. Can I give my yeah. my kind of closing? I believe the wizard to be a very good class and a very fun class. However, I think the wizard is 
like fundamentally different from other classes in the way it does subclasses, I don't necessarily think it's bad. I think it is an interesting way to do things. However, I think it kind of strays away from the wizard's initial idea of a versatile caster. Because, like, when you see at later levels, that is kind of the core of the wizard. The wizard is good at casting in general, not necessarily with specifics. However, I think the specific things lend a lot of flavor to the class, and as a whole, I think it brings more than it loses. And so I think the wizard class is good. Though I do agree that it is probably for more experienced players, because you have to like kind of keep in mind like type of spells you're using and then there are a lot of the abilities are kind of like weird and you have to know the spell casting system like pretty pretty well which is why people sh in my opinion shouldn't start with casters yeah that's true yeah i think you summed that up pretty well all right let's Thank um you. just real quick make a like make a little wizard okay yeah uh what what level you're feeling we don't have to do all spells. We can do a few spells. We don't because spells are a lot. Let's go all the way. Level twenty. Yes. Okay. Uh, Most of the stuff is done for you. Uh, sure. <laughs> do it on D and D Beyond. Let's go through. Let's go through the list, and then by the time we get to class, we'll see how we're feel what vibe we're feeling. We do not necessarily support the business practices of D and D Beyond. We just think it's easier than doing it on paper right now. Yeah. Yeah. For everyone who uh, unsubscribed from D and D Beyond, um, good on you. I like I am truly that was great. Uh, the the apology it caused because of the one D and D sh uh, scandal shenanigans. <laughs> scandal but, shenanigans. Um, yes. We just didn't, and uh, no, I didn't. I did. You we weren't didn't. subscribed, were you? I am. Why am I sharing my content with you? Because I don't pay for the content on there. That's fair. I, I only buy from local retailers. That's fair. Okay. Race. Race. Um, let's do... Do we what kind of, Do we want to take this tip, stereotypical wizard and kind of give it a little twist? Sure. Let's do Eric Cockra. Ooh. Let's do... I'm, I'm feeling the vibe of a very... It's like... 20 years old so they're like 10 years away from death has been studying in a chamber for most of their life very frail but i think uh we can give it a little twist and make him a little air cockra he's unique i have a very cool idea for his spell book okay each uh, of his feathers has a spell inscribed ooh, on it. i like that so like each of his feathers has a rune on it or something yep cast spells that's really cool i love that <laughs> okay so mm. let's air cockra things real quick yes okay so creature type you're a humanoid size your size is medium speed walking speed is 30 flight your flying speed is equal to your walking speed you have wings and yeah. then talons let you deal a d4 for like unarmed damage all right on to class we got wizard wait let me let me look at what wind caller does start okay you get like some interesting like limited casting spell stuff yes. uh wizard Add class. And then let's not choose level yet. Okay. Uh, let's choose abilities. Proficiency. No, no, abilities. Abilities. Right there. Ah, uh, Let's yes. roll for these real quick. Okay. Choose generation method. Uh, manual. manual world. So we're going to do the... I, I have a little homebrew way of doing it, but we're going to do... Since this is like for the podcast, we're going to do the official way. Yes. Where you roll 4d6 and you add the three highest numbers. The first one is a 16. We got a 6, a 5, a 5, and a 1. That's actually a pretty solid set of really rules. Really solid. We got a 14. A 6, a 4, a 4, and a 4. Yes. <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 5. Yep. 1, 2, 3, 5. So that gives us a 10. A 5, a 4, a 4, and a 1, which is 13. Yes. A 6, a 6, a 2, and a 1, which is a 14. I saw the two 6s and I got excited. A six, a five, a four, and a one, which is fifteen. This is one of the better stat blocks I have seen. Honestly, let's do. He's going to be super intelligent. Sixteen goes to an int. Yes, intelligence. I think that he's also a very wise bird. Even though he hasn't been out, he's read a lot of like. This okay. is this is how you lead a kingdom. Books. Okay. Leadership for dummies. <laughs> yeah, leadership for dummies. I love that. I want him to kind of want him to be frail. So I think low strength, low dex. Okay. Here's the thing. We don't have a lot of low stats right. left. So, I think we put the 10 in con. 
Tenon Khan? Because the wizard is already frail, I want to go full into it. Yeah, okay, sure. Like, and then we can have funny moments and be like, he is much stronger than he looks, and he's just, like, curling, like, 50 pounds. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. Well, so he spent... Here's what it was. You know those, like, stereotypical, like... You know in Kung Fu Panda, Poe was doing, like, sit-ups to get dumplings? Oh, yeah. He was doing that, but reading. It's like he would do a push-up, and as he got low to the ground, he would read a sentence, and then he would go back up, and then go down and read another sentence. And so that's how he spent his entire life. So he'll have good strength. 14 in strength. Yeah. Okay. Charisma's going to be 13. Okay, and then then Dex is 14. Dex is 14. Very interesting wizard. I do like having a high Dex on a wizard because the AC. Yep. Let's add those up. Apply. Apply. Okay, back to class. Go back to abilities real quick. I do believe. Um, so in uh, the yes. new uh, system, we get to add a 2 to one of those and a 1 to the other. So add a 2 to intelligence and a 1 to the odd one. Yes, give me one second. Okay, so 2 goes to intelligence. And then the other one's charisma, I guess. Mm. Right? That's the odd number. That's the odd one. Let's do wisdom. I thought wisdom was a 15. Is wisdom a 15? Yeah. Okay, sure. Just go double check that real quick. Yep. Wisdom is now 16. Perfect. Yeah. Amazing. I'm a genius. Let's go to description. Get background. Okay. Background, probably either scholar or hermit. I like scholar. Scholar? Personally. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think scholar is kind of like the stereotypical thing, but I feel like it just works so well if I can find it. Um. Sage, that's what it is. Oh, right. I forgot. They kind of have them. There's cloistered scholar and then there's sage. We could do either or. I like sage. Okay. He has two additional languages. Yes. Give him some, let's give him a normal one uh, that you would like normally use, like dwarvish or elvish or something. I always like elvish, personally. Elvish. And let's give him a really uh, weird one, uh, like gith or hooked horror or like kender or. Okay. What, what are you feeling? Loxodon. Loxodon? Sure. Loxodon. Yeah, he speaks like an elephant. I love the elephant people. He's just going around toot toot toot, yeah. like blowing out his nose. He uh, he made a little contraption that <laughs> voice modulator for Loxodon. Yes, we do have a language from Origin. Oh yeah, as we well. get, so we get another language. Uh, is there an Arakocra language? I don't think so. Okay. Um, I think you. Oh, uh, we could do another normal one. Uh, probably. Let's then. give him orc. Orc. Sure. Yeah. That, it just seems fun. Uh, do we want to do equipment before no, we do, do wizard? class. Okay. I don't think he's level 20. I think this guy's not level 20. He's fairly up there. I think maybe 10. You want to do 10? Yeah, okay. Let's do 10. I like 10. Okay, so for, for proficiencies, I want to give him medicine. Medicine and religion. I don't, I think those are what fit his background the best. Because the other options are investigation and insight. And I don't think that fits him. He, he wasn't around people very much, so not insight. I also think he's probably too caught up in his book to, like, look around him. Yes, exactly. Mm. I think uh, for that reason, he's tripped over many books. <laughs> That's a cute detail. Mm-hmm. I like that. Um, okay, now it's time for the Scribe. Big Order thing. of Scribes. Yeah, it's the coolest I mean, one. No, not even the coolest. It's, like, what fits him the most, let's be honest. I, yeah. It fits him, and it's just interesting, yeah. in my opinion. I really like Order of Scribes. And so now that he's finally decided to come out of seclusion of his uh, area, he's going around and learning all of the stuff he couldn't learn in his cave. Yes. The power builder inside of me just took the level 4 ability score improvement and just put it in an int. That's fair. Do we want to take feet? Uh, so we could do spell sniper, maybe, uh, or ritual caster. I think those would fit him. Ritual caster fits way better than spell sniper, in let's do, my opinion. Let's do ritual caster, then. Normally, if... Okay. So what ritual caster does as the feat is it lets him cast rituals better somehow. I uh, think it decreases time. Here, we can read it when we choose it. <laughs> so we'll just do ritual caster wizard. Yes. Read that out. You have learned a number of spells that you can cast as rituals. These spells are written in a ritual book. You must have... You must have in hand while casting one of them. When you choose this feat, you acquire a ritual book holding two first level spells of your choice. Choose one of the following classes. And we chose um, wizard. You must choose your spells from that class spell list. Um, your spell casting is the same modifier that you would use um, for whichever class. If you come across a spell in written form, such as a magical scroll or a wizard spell book, you can add it. Um, yep. The 
um, the process of copying the spell, yada, yada, yada. Basically, you get extra spells you can cast. I think that fits fairly well. Yeah. We'll take uh, simple comprehend languages. Uh, find familiar would be good for him, I think. I think he would have a familiar to help him around the, the library. It'd be really fun to give him a bird that looks like him. That would be fun, yeah. <laughs> um, he'll be a pigeon, Eric Cocker, and he'll have a pigeon. <laughs> I love that. Uh, so find familiar, definitely. Um, yes. And then he has to comprehend languages because he needs to know them all to study, which we already chose. And yep. then we'll do... Identify. Ah, uh, yeah, identify. I really like identify. Oh, this is... We were we did a thing wrong. What did we do wrong? Uh, these, these were spells you add over time. He probably learned identify along the way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Wait, why do you get to choose another one? Um, because this gives you a book that you can add oh. spells to. Oh. Mm -hmm. Indeed. And then the next thing you get after your feat from level 8 comes at level 10. And that is the 10th level Order of Scribes feature. We'll go over it when we go over the Order of Scribes. Yep. Uh, and then we can choose we can choose a few spells. Yep. Um, probably just like a, you know, like two of each level he can cast. That's a lot. Okay. <sighs> yeah, he gets a lot. Also, he can learn as many as he wants. That's true. Okay. Create bonk. No. Beep. Um. Light. Honestly, yeah. Fits his, like, late night studying. I love that. Mage Hand. Mage Hand, yep. Mage Hand is one of those spells that I kind of just, like, always want, but yeah. never end up taking. Never really use, though. Like, yeah. I have a mending to pr for when he trips over his books and they get damaged. Prestidigitation for when he forgets to take a shower. Yep, absolutely. Go grab mending. Yeah. That feeling when you accidentally tear your book in half because yeah. you couldn't understand the sentence. <laughs> <laughs> and then, what else would he take? Um, Honestly? I don't really know. Maybe one damaging one, just to have a damaging one. Give him Thunderclap. Thunderclap? Yeah, I think it's fun. Right. And then we'll choose one of each level spell. <laughs> okay. Just, like, make it easy. Detect magic. Detect magic? Yeah. Okay. For first level, he's detect magic, which I think makes sense. I he's a He's a scholar. He's looking for information, and that would help him a lot. I agree. Second level. Second level. We'll do... Hey, would he have arcane lock? Would he want to hide his secrets? Probably not. I don't think he cares. Detect thoughts. Mm, maybe. You gotta know what they're thinking so yeah. you can learn from them. Just look through second level a little more. There is a truck outside. It there beeps is. a lot. There is. Uh, locate object, maybe? <sighs> locate object is also kind of yeah, kind of fitting. This is not normally how I build characters. Um, see invisibility. He can't stand the idea that he wouldn't know a secret. Mm, okay. So see invisibility or the other one I said. Uh, you said uh fine locate object yes locate object or see invisibility which one do you like mm, i kind of like the see invisibility idea okay i feel like see invisibility he's gonna be like i have see invisibility and everybody's gonna be like yes that's so useful right now yeah <laughs> that's like yeah that's what we i want. can see if there's an invisible guy in the room there's <laughs> not <laughs> oh it's so funny yeah uh, clairvoyance so what i'm so we're just making a divination wizard <laughs> i suppose uh but scribes is more fun yeah he just has a lot of divination spells which I, makes sense for yeah. him we could also just give him some like interesting stuff like intellect fortress might be cool we might maybe give him just his third level one says damaging one because i feel like he needs one damaging spell i would agree how do we feel about something cool not fireball uh, summon shadow spawn. What the fuck is this? Excuse my language. No, I care so much. Oh man. Interesting. Interesting. We're not picking that. I don't think. But okay. Tidal wave. He knocks himself out of the sky. That would be really funny. It would be funny. Uh, what about like flaming sphere? What level is that? 
I don't think it's third. Because I've heard it's good. Is it good? Uh... Oh, Melf's Minute Meteors. Maybe. Uh... Yeah, I don't think it's third. Fast Friends. I got a second level. Really? Yeah, maybe he has Flaming Sphere. Just... Yeah, I mean, we have extra slots. We might as well. Yeah. Is that a wizard spell? I think so. Yeah, it is. It's a lower power fireball. Flaming Spear. Flaming Spear. Why can I not find... It? Oh, there it is. I actually scrolled right to it. Okay, and then third level. Third level... What's Clairvoyance do? I don't know, but I want to give him Counterspell now. Or Dispel Magic. Or does he already have Dispel Magic? Uh, no, he didn't. He doesn't have yeah, it. he has a just Ritual, oh, which is kind of when you need to spell magic. Ritual. Um, I want to give him Counterspell, and um, we can also do Clairvoyance. Yeah, we can do both. Why not? Oh, sure. He has 10th level. He has quite a few spells. Yeah. Um, Down to 4th level. 4th level. We shall do this. Um, Black Tentacles. Um, Arcane Eye is strong. Good. Arcane Eye just feels right. Duh. Confusion. He starts talking about his hobbies. Um, there's arcane eye locate. He wouldn't use locate creature. At least not much. Private sanctum. Mm. I feel like arcane eye is just right though. Yeah, let's take I arcane agree. eye. I don't know why. It just feels like mm. correct. Let's find it. Uh, there it is. All right, fifth level spells. Which I think is his highest level at this. It is point. his highest level. Okay, so we have um, animate objects, arcane hand, Bigby's hand, cloud kill, cut of cold, conjure elemental, contact other plane, control winds, creation, dance macabre, which is one of my favorite spells. Um, really? I just think it's cool, um, but it does not fit him. Yeah. What fit him? What's legend lore? Uh, well, oh, well, he, you know, yeah, legend lore fits very well. I feel like we can pick, like, one more from fifth, might as well. Yeah, the scrying. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't have to take it. We actually just made a divination he's, wizard. Yeah, he's just a divination wizard. Wall of Force uh, is just a good spell. You know? Yeah. I think I like that. All right, let's go look at our spells. Read them off. Uh, now that we have a collective. One second, it takes a minute to scroll through the hundreds of spells. Yeah, wizards have uh, access to so many spells. Uh, go to spellbook. Yes. Because those are the prepared ones. We, and we didn't prepare them. Are you sure? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, light, Mage Hand, Mending, Press the Digitation, Thunderclap, Detect Magic, Flaming Spear, Sea Invisibility, Clairvoyance, Counterspell, Arcane Eye, Legend Lore, Wall of Force. So, I think, I like what we did. I, we have We took the very, like, stereotypical cloistered scholar has been studying magic their entire life. I like that too. And then kind of gave it a little twist. He uh, also, he cared about his physical training. He cared about his body. He didn't want it to let it rot. Yeah. So he incorporated it into his study. And then... I think he was probably like, if my body is unhealthy, I will die. Yeah. And I will not study anymore. So I must study as long as possible. Yeah, exactly. And so he can, he can still like put up a good fight even without spells. And I like that we basically made a divination wizard because he would use a lot of divination to... I think we're finding out why the wizard stuff. Cl subclasses are like they are. Because certain wizards just kind of have like an inherent yeah. idea that they want to do. And so it focuses. Mm -hmm. He yeah, wants to I learn a speak. lot. And so with divination, he can learn a lot. But uh, his, his little home has been exhausted of all resources. So he has to go out and adventure to find more information. Yes. He also wants to help spread that information. And that is why he is Order of the Scribes. Yes. Order like of that. the Scribes is so cool. I, I like Order that. I like that a lot. Yes. Okay, so let's do some equipment. Okay. Quarterstaff, because it's cooler than a dagger. True arcane focus. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I always go orb. Really? Always, yeah. Uh, let's... I don't know, I, a lot of the time I do rod, and then I'm like, oh, his quarterstaff is his arcane focus. Honestly? Yes. Or not rod staff. That was one of the options. Honestly? Yes. <laughs> and then scholar's pack, because... 
Yeah, it just fits him better. He's a scholar. Which includes a backpack, a book of lore, a bottle of ink, an ink pen, ten sheets of parchment, a little bag of sand, and a small knife. Yep, accurate. <laughs> yep. It's just correct. Yep. And then you also get a spell book, and then from Sage, a bottle of black ink. Yeah, more ink. A quill. Yeah, more quills. Um, Small knife. Yes. A letter from a dead colleague posing a question you have not been able yet been able to answer. That's why he left. Yes. That's why he left his house. He couldn't find the answer in his in his like little cave hut and he realized i need i can i can learn more i need to learn more and left yes and then you get a set of common clothes and a pouch containing gen p 10 gp all right perfect i i like i like our little guy let's give him a name we didn't we never gave him a name i'm really bad with names this this is your job okay era cockra he's an era cockra yeah no his name is era cockra no (laughs) Okay, let's name him after um, the most broken magic card ever printed. Ragavan? Ragavan. All right, he's Ragavan now. <laughs> no, 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 we can't do that. He's Jace. Austin. Huh? His name is Drib. Drib. Okay, I love it. Look at that backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Cody does this really stupid thing with names. He's playing... <laughs> He's playing. He's playing a war. <laughs> he's playing a warforged in one of the campaigns right now, who's named Rig, which is gear backwards, and he just named this character Drib, which is bird backwards. Sure. I uh, also have another um, character who really likes coffee, and his name is like Nib Efok, and so it's Coffee Bean, <laughs> but backwards. Is is that really? Yes. <laughs> I never really, I never realized. Yeah, you don't really realize until you see it written, yeah. and then someone like mentions it, because I don't know. A lot of the time, you're just not thinking of like, mm-hmm. why would you do that? That's stupid, and it is. Yeah, but right. that's what makes it fun. I'm, I'm happy with. I'm also happy. What, what magic that? item would he seek out? Like, what would it be his ideal thing? Um. I feel like a book, one of the books. Oh. Maybe Tome of Clear Thought, because that improves his intelligence. Though yes. he would only be able to use it once. He's 10 years away from dying of old age. Yeah. That might be... He's probably looking for something to extend his life. Mm, yeah, Lich Arc. It would be interesting. You know what I hate about Liches? Hmm. They kind of... They showed me what a Lich could be with the Eldritch Lich. Um, and kind of like their expanded portfolio on D&D Beyond. Oh, yeah. And it, now it annoys me that only wizards are like ever really depicted as liches. And then even that. Antonio makes is making a lich for every class. God, he's awesome. I love um, him. He, his bard one is really cool. His his druid one's really cool. His sorcerer one is really... You need to watch this video. I have, shout out Antonio D'Amico. His, that's not his name. It's the pointy hat on YouTube. Yes. <laughs> I... That sounds awesome, because I really like Liches. He's more creative than I will ever be, and that's awesome for him. Yes. <laughs> Same here. Not me being more creative than mm-hmm. you. I mean, he's more creative than me. Yeah. Yes. Did and... you just agree? You were supposed to disagree with him. <laughs> <laughs> And um, <laughs> if you made it all the way to the end of this video, I hope that you learned some stuff about the wizard class, or maybe got some ideas for wizards, or something like that. Oh, do you want to quickly say what your favorite idea for a wizard is? Favorite idea for a wizard? Um, do you want to go first? Yeah. Um, I've talked to you about this build before, and originally I wanted to do a bard, but they don't have a necromancy subclass because um, Wizards of the Coast hates me and everything I love. Um, so I want to make an old sea captain who's like a reborn, and his entire crew died. And so whenever he, like like starts casting necromancy spells he starts like singing a sea shanty and mm-hmm. then like his crew is like undead and they kind of come to his aid and they do his stuff i think it'd be fun i think that would be really cool i kind of want to do if i were to play wizard i would probably do order of scribes love that uh i would want to do like if i were to do a r- long running campaign this is what i would do i would want to do maybe like a little kid who just wants to learn a lot Aww. But not necessarily, it doesn't have to be like a 12 year old, it could be like an adult if I wanted. But just, you know, just like, a, I, I think he lived, uh, I think he's autistic and he lived a lot of his life alone. Uh, and 
Yeah, he just he just really wants to go into the world and learn and uh, and and then he wants to tell you about it. And then he wants to tell you about it, and he will ramble on for hours about the really weird things. Wholesome let wizard him. moment. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that's the wizard I would play. That's nice. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. Kind of feels like. I don't know. I like. I think I. I do like the idea of like the very stereotypical wizard that yeah. study their whole life. But I do. I don't want it to be just that. I wanted to give it a little twist. Like, yeah. Like what I just did, or what we just did with the Eric Cocker man. Yes. I the stereotypical wizard. Like I think I've said this before. I don't like scholarly characters as much as I like, mm-hmm. like action based characters. If yeah. you know what I mean. Like I like being able to do things more so than I like being able to like like say i know things it just yeah i don't know that's more my vibe yeah see that's the one thing about wizard that i find interesting is it's the only stereotype the like the stereotype for that class is probably one of the only ones i like like i don't like the barbarian stereotype big dumb brute crush thing what no i love that stereotype (laughs) i don't i I wouldn't enjoy to play it that much but like okay i feel but i feel like um wait i did play that stereotype uh, quite a few times <laughs> <laughs> actually though uh but like with the wizard one i don't know i kind of like it but not base i want to like develop it a little more give it a little twist make it more unique um, but like, like a lime on top just make it a little bit yeah tastier put in a drop of vanilla oh mm. with the lime or without the lime gotta get some vanilla lime action mm. 